Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. Here it is, the coveted top 10 programming languages to learn in 2017. Just a little bit of, of background behind myself. I've been a software developer for about seven, seven or eight years now. Um, so I've been doing enterprise development for quite some time. I also created a top 10 list of programming languages to learn last year for 2016. Um, and in that process, the videos received close to you know, roughly 700,000 views or so with thousands upon thousands of comments from the programming community. So um, I did a lot more research into this year's list compared to uh, last year's list. So I hope that um, this will appease you know, a lot of the different industries that are blossoming out there. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that this is still the top 10 programming languages so um, this isn't about like okay the top 10 newest languages or top 10 that doesn't you know that competes with our modern day programming um, this is about what are the top 10 languages to learn this year and and that is for jobs for money for building new things so um, you know we could always have this this topic all that you know we could argue about this all day long but let me just get into the list now Number one, or number 10, I'm starting from the back to the front, we're gonna go with Haskell. So I said, if you're gonna go functional, you might as well go with Haskell. Haskell is a purely functional language. Everything is built with functions. Functions call other functions. Functions are, um, everything is immutable. Um, so immutable makes functions reliable and um, you, know, you never have any sort of uh, shared state and, and things like that. So a lot of things that end up biting you with a shared state system for multi-threading. And uh, if you if you create a proper Haskell program, um, you're going to have blazingly quick, a uh, blazingly quick apl application. You're going to be able to crunch a lot of numbers. Um, so Haskell's been around for a very long time. An honorable mention would go to Scala, F Sharp, and Clojure. You could probably add maybe Elixir and a couple of other ones as well. But um, if you were going to pick a functional language to add to this list, I really think that Haskell uh, fits the bill because it is purely functional and is going to teach you proper functional fundamentals um, You know, if, if, compared to some of those other languages that I mentioned that are not entirely uh, purely functional. Number nine on the list is assembler language, or ASM for short. So we're seeing ASM return to the browser. We're seeing... Uh, a lot of people go back to assembly. Assembly is the lowest of all programming languages out there for your computer. Lower level means that it's closer to the hardware. You're going to be able to tweak things on the computer that higher level languages will just not let you have access to. It also means that you're going to spend a lot of time uh, writing ones and zeros and pointers. and, and um, it, It's going to be a very, very complex process of be, being able to build uh, complicated machinery and, and programming languages that may arise out of the assembler language. Um, however, if you are going to push the envelope of what's possible with programming, assembler is going to be the, the go-to language to do that. So we're going to continue to see some of the smartest individuals writing assembler code out there. Number eight, we have Go, which is the Go programming language, uh, language or also known as Golang. Uh, Ken Thompson, one of the, the founders or the creator of the B programming language back in the late 60s or early 70s, I'm not sure what date that is, he helped design the Go programming language. Ultimately, it arose out of Google's um, project. And uh, Google, at, when it was first getting started, actually used Python for its stack. So the first Google search engine was using Python. Um, eventually, they ended up having to do a lot of data crunching with a, more, with a faster static type language, which gave rise to like C and, and C++, uh, at least at Google's operations, to be able to parse through their massive amounts of data. Um, because Google wanted a better way of getting developers on the same page and writing code that each could understand uh, much, much easier, but also be extremely powerful and be built with concurrency in mind, um, Go was created for that reason, and Py uh, and Python is um, Python and C plus plus. I mean, some of that that old Go Google code is being replaced with the Go programming language code. Um, not all of it. I mean, there's still quite a bit of code that you're going to see with those other languages. But Go is going to continue to rise in popularity because anytime you have a company uh, with as much influence as Google you're definitely going to do good. So uh, continue to see Go rise in, in 2017. It's somewhat of a slow rise since it's been out for a few years now, but it's definitely a language worth picking up. 
The next one is number seven, um, C++. So C++ is built on top of C, which is the Don or the godfather of all programming languages. Um, so C++ still powers many games, GUI applications. Um, when it comes to game engines and things like that, you're going to see a lot of libraries in C Sharp and Python that are just ported from C++ libraries. So if you needed to push the envelope of what those fr frameworks and engines are doing, you have to know how to use C++. C++ is the language of choice that you're going to use if you get into the um, game development with Unreal Engine. Um, and it's a, it's a language that goes back all the way to the 80s. Um, it, it's been around for a very long time. Um, somewhat of a bad rap, depending on who you ask. Um, a lot of things have been tacked onto the C++ language, but there has been a resurgence in its, po in its popularity over the last, uh, I would say, 10 years. It never really left, but um, for the longest time, people were saying, oh, well, you know, this or that is going to do away with C++, and eventually we won't need C++ anymore. And, um, and that's just not the case. It's still going to continue to be around. There's still quite a bit of jobs using C++ and, um, and just continue to see that into 2017. Number six, this is somewhat of a surprise listing if you watched the, the video from last year. TypeScript is, uh, is being mentioned, not even in the top 10, but also at number six. So that, that gives it a lot of uh, credence compared to, you're probably like, well, TypeScript, I mean, it's, TypeScript is bringing type safety to JavaScript. JavaScript is the language for the browser. Um, the older br JavaScript standard things there was no um, there was no block scoping. Um, you had all kinds of you it, you can consider JavaScript a functional language. Some people will tell you it's not a functional language, but an argument can be made either way. Uh, but JavaScript allows you to do a lot of uh, a lot of things like passing in J JavaScript functions as a first class citizen. Um, also, the fact that you don't know what types are being returned from JavaScript functions just by looking at them. So if you have a statically typed programming language like C++ or Java or C Sharp, you can clearly look at a method and understand what type you're going to be getting back. With JavaScript, it's not the case. You can concatenate it all into one line and you have no idea what's going on uh, without the painstaking process of stepping through it. So it makes things very difficult to work on if you have large development teams. You can ask any large development team, JavaScript is not as easy to be on the same page with as compared to something like C Sharp. So this has given rise to languages built on top of JavaScript which get compiled down to raw JavaScript. We've seen it, if you look at what React is doing with JSX um, or you see with CoffeeScript, um, but when you look at all those different th those different flavors of, of what's being done here, TypeScript is is definitely the number one um, over all those guys. Number one, and, and mainly the main reason for that is because Google has even ditched JavaScript in favor of TypeScript for the new Angular 2.0 project. All the documentation for Angular 2.0 are being done in TypeScript. TypeScript is going to allow you to understand what your functions are returning. Another thing too is it was actually designed by Anders uh, Helsberg, who's uh, the creator of the C++, or I'm sorry, the C Sharp programming language, um, and he's an extremely smart, you know, definitely a genius when it comes to language design. C Sharp is a, a fantastic language, and uh, and TypeScript is built in the same flavor, so it it makes JavaScript quite a bit better to deal with, um, and, and I think that we're going to see it emerge as as the top um, JavaScript preprocessor. Number five is Swift. Apple is doing away with their Objective-C. So whenever you thought of Apple, you've always thought of Objective-C, and some people will still tell you that you think of an Objective-C. But Objective-C isn't going to make the top ten in this list. It's going to be replaced instead by Swift. And instead of Swift being further down the list like it was last year, Swift is going to move up. It's going to be one of the most popular languages on the TOB index. It's going to continue to rise as more and more Apple developers switch over to the Swift language. There's a lot of legacy code out there that's all written in, in Objective-C, but eventually we're going to see much more Swift out there, and that's going to be all these uh, Apple developers know. So I, can, I, I would think that we're still going to get uh, a lot of, of growth here in the next few years for Swift. Number four is Python. It's going to take one step down, as we're going to see, um, of these uh, compared to these other languages. But Python is a great first language. It's it's been rising in popularity for the last ten years. It's been a popular language for the past thirty years. 
um, over, since Google's used it uh, for the longest time and it powers YouTube and there's so many other things that you can do with Python, I could talk about it all day long. In fact, Python is now the number one most taught programming language of, of all IT schools in the entire United States. And we're talking about some of the greatest schools like MIT and Stanford and Carnegie Mellon and all these other great schools. They're teaching Python because Python is open source. It's easy to pick up as a first language. It doesn't burn people out with its static type checking and stuff like that. So Python is a dynamically interpreted duck type language and you'll have to read up more on that. I have plenty of videos by the way on that if you're interested. But Python is a great language to learn if you want to get into robotics or uh, bioinformatics or just mathematical computations. If you want to get into some uh, basic gaming uh, and definitely web development with Django. Django powers sites like Instagram and Pinterest and Reddit.com and not to mention uh, YouTube again. So Python is going to be a continuous um, – it's going to continue to grow. And it being number four on this list and I believe number three on the list last year, Python – is an absolutely fantastic language and, and it definitely should be learned even by experienced programmers. Number three is Java, not to be confused with JavaScript. This is a powerful static type language um, and it's ruled the job market for decades now. So if you look at, okay, I want to get a job and, and uh, how do I get into a corporate, at least corporate enterprise development, Java is has ruled that market for quite some time. Um, and I, I don't expect that to change anytime soon. I don't think it's now like the, the flavor of the month type of thing. It's not like everybody's like, oh, I love Java. I want to jump into the Java train. But um, Java is, is somewhat of a necessity. There's so much code out there. There's so much opportunity. If you're a good Java developer, you should be able to find a job uh, a little bit easier than I think than if you were to be a Python or a PHP or a Perl developer for sure. So uh, Java is also the language of choice for the Android framework. So if you want to do a lot of Android development, Java and Android kind of go hand in hand. So um, we're, we're going to continue to see Java rule the market. So if you're looking for a language and you haven't learned Java, you're definitely not wasting your time learning it. Number two is JavaScript. This was the number one language last year on the list. Um, so this one, um, this is the only agreed upon language of the web browser. For so long, we've heard of languages like ASM.js, so we're going to hear about um, how Dart.js is going to be the new language of the browser. Um, but the thing is, is JavaScript keeps getting better. The newest JavaScript 6.0 standards, also known as ECMAScript 2015, has a lot of things like lexical scoping and um, it has like using the let variables. It has promises, um, and module importing. There's going to be a lot of stuff that JavaScript is bringing to the table. And JavaScript 7 is going to promise to bring even more stuff. So as as the JavaScript language matures, um, we're seeing some of its voids being filled with its newer releases. So we're seeing languages like TypeScript pop up um, to try to fill some of the, like the void that, that JavaScript brings. But the, the fact of the matter is JavaScript is going to be it's not going anywhere. It's, it's, if you want to be a web developer, you have to know JavaScript. You absolutely have to know it. Um, you're going to see TypeScript probably arise in popularity because of the shortcomings of some of the things that JavaScript does, you know, especially dating back a few years ago. But um, watch you know, those d deficiencies um, shore up and, and JavaScript continue to be a, a, a popular language um, for web development. The only thing that JavaScript isn't really going to do because it would change the way JavaScript works and operates is that it's never going to be a type safe language. So with TypeScript, that's why it brings this type safety to JavaScript and that's why I really think that TypeScript is not going to be really replaced by JavaScript. I think that they're going to both be pretty important uh, hand in hand. The final and number one on this list is the C Sharp language. Now, to all you non-Microsoft developers out there, you're probably going to be like, oh, Microsoft fanboy, blah, blah, blah. But if you guys know me and you know my videos, I've been harping on Python and Django since I started development. I love Python. Uh, I love Django. I love um, – I've gotten into Go. I, I've done some Rust tutorials. I've done all kinds of stuff. But you have to, get, you have to give the nod to C Sharp this year because of some of the things that the new CEO, Satya Nadella – at Microsoft has done. He's open sourced the C Sharp language itself. He's open sourced the proprietary Visual Studio uh, integrated development environment for writing code. We're seeing the um, 
the Azure cloud environment start to take more and more business, like many Fortune 500s and Fortune 100s are now putting their application stacks on the Microsoft cloud. Microsoft recently bought um, LinkedIn. They bought Xamarin, which Xamarin is a billion-dollar platform that is used to be able to write um, mobile apps using C plus or Objective C or you know mobile apps for Android or Apple or even the Windows Phone. You can do all of that stuff in Xamarin. It's also the language of choice behind the Unity game engine. So, with Microsoft sitting on nearly a hundred billion dollars in cash and going out and buying companies like LinkedIn for twenty some billion dollars. Uh, they are going to continue to be a force. And even where they haven't competed due to really turning their back on some of the development community over the last 10 to 15 years, maybe longer, um, they're starting to gain some of that back. And they have so much money and so much influence that they're able to pretty much buy their way into areas that they really couldn't compete just on the simple fact of, uh, of programmer love. So C Sharp will make the number one on this list. Um, all, all I would say the top five of these languages, I mean, you cannot go wrong with any one of them. Uh, but if you're looking for a language to learn and, and anyone on this list, I don't think you're going to be wasting your time at all in 2017. All right, guys, let the comments begin. Let me know what you think. And here's to 2017.